Hey guys, it's Alex, and I'm here with today's review for The Deep End of the Ocean by Jacqueline Mitchard. This is an adult drama novel about a woman whose three-year-old son disappears. Over the course of the next ten years, this book follows the family as they react to and recover from, in some ways, the trauma of his disappearance. This book switches perspectives between Beth, the mother, and Vincent, her eldest son, who was seven at the time his baby brother Ben was kidnapped. This book sounds exactly like the kind of thing I would like. It has a mystery element, but overall it's a family drama. It covers what happens to a family after a traumatic event, and that's very interesting to me. When I read thrillers, I've never given a thriller five stars before, and I think that's because I'm more interested on the family dynamic and what happens to the people and the characters and not really the mystery itself. So that's why I tend to pick up books like this and why books like these tend to be my favorites. But I gave this book three stars because I honestly just didn't think it was very well done. <laughs> I do want to say up front this is not a thriller. I want to stress that because I think if you went into this thinking it would be a thriller or a mystery you'd be very disappointed. Just because there is a mystery element and because her son has been kidnapped it is just a family drama and it focuses on the characters and their relationships and what happens to them and not so much the thriller elements of the story. I thought the main character Beth was really unlikable and honestly I felt this way for all of the characters but largely her because she was such a major character and Vincent, the other main character, was not nearly as bad as she was. I was pretty much okay with Vincent as a character. I didn't love him, but he was fine. Beth was just irritating, and she wasn't unlikable in an interesting way. I like interesting, unlikable characters. I like main characters to have flaws, and you get invested in them because they're real. But she was just kind of a crappy person, honestly, in a very boring way. And I really didn't care about her in the slightest. She would constantly do things like tell her husband that she only loved one of her three children, or she'd ask the doctor if her son was retarded, or call the teenager who worked the front desk a slut. And these were just constant cringy things, and it felt like Jacqueline Mitchard was trying to write a main character who had her son kidnapped, where you were kind of like torn between feeling sympathetic for her and hating her, and I wasn't. Like, of course I sympathized for her. Like, her three-year-old son was kidnapped. Yes, that sympathy was there. She wasn't evil. But I didn't care about reading about her. I just felt bad and wanted to stop reading. And that was pretty much how I felt about this book. <laughs> and just to make a quick note, this book was written in the 90s, so they do use a fair number of cringy terms that we don't anymore. Like, one of her friends is a gay man and she constantly refers to him as a homosexual in, like, that very kind of, like, cringy way that, like, only homophobes really do that in 2018. <laughs> And she'd use terms like American Indian or retard or things like that that aren't acceptable anymore and were kind of, I don't really know if they were all that acceptable in the 90s, but seeing as this book is 25 years old, I'm not really giving it a pass, but I'm sort of just accepting that it is a product of its time. There was one bit in this book that I actually really liked and made me feel very emotional, and that was about 130 pages in when for the first time we switch from Beth's point of view to Vincent's. And this is several months after the kidnapping, I believe, or at least several weeks, when they've returned home to Wisconsin, where they live, from Chicago, where their son was kidnapped. Beth returns last, and it's told from Vincent's perspective, as he misses his mother, he doesn't understand where his baby brother has gone to, he's only seven years old. And that whole chapter of it being Christmas time, and he asked Santa to bring his brother back, and he watched fights between his mother and his grandparents when his grandparents bought gifts for his three-year-old brother for Christmas. And it was very emotional and very sad, and I really loved that chapter. Vincent wore on me a bit as he got older. I felt like his perspective was very interesting when he was a young child at seven to ten about, but when he got older, when he was like 15, 16, he was just sort of a cringy teenage boy who had a lot of issues. And that did wear on me. But the, the first chapter Vincent had, I found really emotional and really sad, and that was my favorite part of this book. The writing in this felt unnecessarily dense, like she was trying to write beautiful literary fiction, and it just came across as unnecessary and overcomplicated, and she used all kinds of like weird metaphors and stuff that really didn't work and felt super clunky. At one point, Beth starts screaming after her three-year-old son is kidnapped, 
and then it's compared to an orgasm and that was like weird and uncomfortable and didn't really seem to fit with the story and the vibe from the story and there were like a lot of things like that. I like beautiful writing and I like really flowery gorgeous writing. It's something I am a sucker for but this wasn't beautiful. This was just trying very hard and failing. And the thing with dense literary writing is that it's dense with a purpose. It's dense because it has a lot to say. And this didn't have a lot to say. It was just dense for the sake of being dense, which was kind of annoying. One thing that really annoyed me, like above everything else, and I just cringed every time it happened, was eavesdropping. This story used eavesdropping so much, and I really hate that. I don't mind if characters eavesdrop on occasion, especially if they're like a character for whom eavesdropping is like a thing, like they're a spy or something. But when a character is just constantly eavesdropping on other people's conversations, that's just a lazy way to give them information that they really shouldn't have. Like as a writer, you're writing a story and you get stuck because your character needs to know something that they wouldn't realistically know within the story. And the easiest way to fix that is to have them eavesdrop. If it happens once or twice, I can live with it. Like I don't hate when a character eavesdrops because sometimes it does work very well within the story. But with this, Vincent was constantly eavesdropping on people and not just like a little bit, but full conversations. He'd just stand in a doorway and listen to people talk for five pages. And that was so awful. That's just the most lazy storytelling. I hated that. And it's the kind of thing, it doesn't bug me when it's only a little bit, but it happened constantly in this. Every time he had a chapter, he'd eavesdrop on several conversations. And it's just like, just tell the story from a different perspective or bring him into it somehow so he's not just like standing there constantly eavesdropping. I hate that so much. It's one of the laziest things. Just please come up with something better than them eavesdropping on every single conversation. And to sort of go off of that, there was a lot of dialogue in this book in general and a lot of talking about deep things, but it seemed like they were just discussing deep things to mask the fact that this book didn't have a whole lot of substance. And I don't mind books that are purely for entertainment value and don't have a lot of, you know, stereotypical literary value. I'm fine with that. I love entertainment. But this wasn't entertaining. It was just trying to hide the fact that it had no substance and it was boring. My biggest problem with this book was just that it was boring. It wasn't very interesting. And I love family dramas. I love what this book was doing in this kind of story. I'm not someone who needs a lot of action. I really like a slow family drama, but this book was so boring. I wasn't invested in any of the characters. I wasn't invested in any of their relationships. The ending just felt anticlimactic and I didn't understand why it ended where it did and why it kept going after a certain point. And then it felt like it didn't go far enough after it kept going for a while. And it was, it dragged. This book just really <laughs> dragged a lot. It was an Oprah book and that kind of makes me cringe because I've had some, I've had some bad history with some Oprah books before and I didn't know that going in because there's no Oprah sticker on this copy. But I was really excited because this does sound like exactly the kind of book I'd love to read and it wound up being really boring and disappointing. I would honestly compare this a lot to Jodi Pico and the kind of books she writes and I don't mean that as like an insult if you like Jodi Pico. I just mean a lot of the similar issues and the similar things I liked in this book I come across in Jodi Pico books. I just find in general Jodi Pico's books tend to be more entertaining than this was and I tend to be more invested in her characters even if I still don't think they're that great. I'm very much along for the ride. This I found much more boring and it very much dragged. I do think if it sounds interesting and if you really love Jodi Pico's books, it might be worth giving a try because I do think Jodi Pico is just someone that I've grown out of and my reading tastes have changed. I used to love her so maybe if I'd read this book in high school I really would have loved it then. But for me overall now, this was a boring book. It wasn't terrible but it was barely a three-star read and not really a three-star I'm going to look back on fondly, I don't think. Let me know down below if you've read The Deep End of the Ocean and what you thought of it if you did. I don't really know much about this book. I didn't go into it with any kind of prior knowledge. I just sort of picked it up randomly. And it is a fairly popular book from the 90s, so I'd be curious if anyone else on here has read it and if your thoughts were at all similar to mine or if you disagreed on what I had to say. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see y'all again soon.